Hi, John with eTrailer. If it's time to do brakes, check out this option that we have here. This is our 12-inch brake drum assembly. This comes pre-packaged already. It has front and rear bearings already pre-packed. The races are already installed. The grease seal's already installed. We have new studs, new lug nuts, new dust cap covers. Now you're gonna cut your install time at least by half. Stick around, we'll show you. So this is what your e-trailer brake drum assembly is gonna look like on your trailer. Now, it's gonna include, of course, the brake drum, new studs, new lug nuts. It's gonna have the inner and the outer bearing and races, and those bearings are already pre-packed. You do not have to pack them. It also includes the new grease seal already installed on the back side. And as far as the dust covers on the front, it's included in the kit is both some for easy grease, the easy lube spindles, and the ones that do not have that. Now, why just replace the drums and not just the brakes? As you can see here, your brakes take a beating on your trailer. This magnet drags on the inside of this brake drum. If you just replace the brake and the assembly on here and don't replace this, your components just aren't going to last as long. You can see the wear on the inside and on the magnet, as well as the corrosion on your braking system. This is gonna significantly decrease your install time and increase the longevity of your brand new parts. So how do you know if this is the right kit for you? Well, first things first, you need to know how many lug nuts you have. One, two, three, four, five, six. You need to also know the spacing, and that's gonna be measuring from the middle of one over to the middle of the other. So this would be a six on five and a half inch spacing. So this kit will work for you if you have six on five and a half spacing, and if you have wheel sizes from 14 and a half up to 16 and a half inches. Now, if you have a different bolt pattern or different wheel sizes, go ahead and get on our website. We have multiple kits available for different applications. So if you've changed brakes before on your trailer, just know that this is going to make your life incredibly easier. It's gonna speed up your install time. If you haven't, and you wanna see how these were installed, stick around, we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on our install. Now we've already went ahead and jacked the trailer up and we've got jack stands underneath it. You wanna make sure that the tire is free spinning. We're gonna go ahead and remove six lug nuts, run in a 13 16 socket. Let's go ahead and set the wheel off to the side. Now our next step is gonna to be to knock this hub off here. You can use a rubber hammer. I found that just to be the easiest thing to do. Just grab a hold of it down here and kind of strike like that and it'll pop off. Now our kit has a new hub cover like this, so we can go ahead and set this off to the side. We won't be reusing it. Our next step is gonna be removing the castle nut here. Now it's being held on with a cotter pin. It's a good idea to have a good supply of paper towels or shop towels when we're doing this. So you can see the cotter pin can be bent up and over. Just go ahead and straighten this out. Now our kit doesn't come with new cotter pins. We do have cotter pins available here at eTrailer. Um, it's just uh, my personal opinion. I don't like reusing cotter pins, so I always use new ones. Let's go ahead. The castle nut should be finger tight. If it's not, your bearings may have been too tight. Um, they should always be somewhat loose in here. You should be able to remove them with your fingers. Now, we will be reusing the castle nut, and there'll be a flat washer in here too. And if it doesn't want to come out, you can always give the drum a shake there and it'll bring it to you. Now, our kit does come with new bearings and everything. So we can just go ahead and pull the entire assembly off. So we'll go ahead and clean off the spindle. We need all of the grease off of this.
Now, this is an easy grease spindle, meaning it's got a hole in it, and you will have ports on here where the grease will come out on the back side here. So you want to be careful about um, rubbing dirt around or packing the inside of this with dirt. But basically, we just want to get all of the grease off of here. You can use solvents to clean it. Just be careful and know that um, you don't want the inside of this shaft filling up with solvents. So with the spindle cleaned up, we can turn our attention to the actual braking assembly, the pads. Now, we are going to be changing these over to brand new. It's just a good idea. If you're going to spend the money for drums, just have uh, more than likely your magnets chewed up, your hardware is rusted, and it's just something less to worry about. We offer these kits here at eTrailer. There are videos on installation of the braking assembly. Now before we slide our new hub assembly on, I'd like to go ahead and take some grease and we're going to go ahead and grease up the spindle. Now this is more of an anti-rust preventative. No matter if you have easy lube spindles or not, just get yourself a little bit of grease on here, not too much, and work it around and cover up the bare metal. And the tab on this flange here, this is where your, your new oil seal is going to go and the new grease seal. Now more than likely it's going to be lubed up anyway because these bearings come pre-packed, but this is just a preventative measure here. All right, now let's talk about your new drums. When they come boxed to you, they're going to be in plastic and they're going to have oil on them because these get shipped from overseas. So you're going to need to take some brake parts cleaner and clean the inside surface of this really well. So that being said, we have, everything is contained in here. You got the, the inner bearing is inside of here. Your grease seal is already on. The bearings are already packed. You're literally ready to go. So I go ahead and I leave this outer seal on when I go to place the bearings on there. It will, the spindle will pop through, but it just for right now while we're handling this, it'll keep your outer bearing inside and safe. So as you place it on, you want to line it up with your spindle. You want to be very careful about the lip on your oil seal, on the grease seal right here. So be careful that you don't graze it on the threads on the spindle or anything else. And just take your time, line it up with your pads. And as I push this on, you're going to see the front cover. Pop off. That's going to expose our bearing here. So just kind of wiggle it and it'll keep moving forward here. Until the back bearing and race are seated on there. Now our next step is going to be to replace the washer and castle nut. Now you want to make sure that you have these uh, relatively clean and I use um, either diesel fuel, you can use gasoline if you're careful, but it's flammable and it has a vapors that you need to watch. Or you can just use a solvent or brake parts cleaner to clean these off. But we'll go ahead and you can see the wear on this washer that was running up against the outer bearing here. Um, this washer is still in good shape. It's just a thrust washer. We'll go ahead and put that back on replace our castle nut and we'll spin this on finger tight. Now the minute we make contact with the outer bearing there, start spinning your drum. And this way we're not going to bind up either of the bearings, front or back. So as we spin, we can still finger tighten the castle nut. This is going to seat our bearings. And eventually you won't be able to turn the castle nut by hand anymore. Now the noise you're hearing are the new brake pads contacting the drum. They're relatively close. We still will have to adjust these out, but that's just letting us know right now that the drum is seated, our castle nut is tight. Now I've got a pair of adjustable pliers here. This is just kind of an extra step I like to do just to make sure that there wasn't any burrs on the spindles. I'm going to grab our 
castle nut here. And as I'm spinning, I'm gonna see if I can't turn the castle nut anymore. And I can, but there's considerable pressure to turn it. That lets me know that we are seated with the bearings. And I don't wanna go anymore. So we have our new cotter pin and we know that it's at the 12 o'clock position on this spindle. Yours may not be, it may be off to the side a little bit, but ours is the 12 o'clock position. Now, the castle nut is tight and up against the, the bearings. We're gonna come back one notch and then drop our cotter pin in. Okay, the next step, I went ahead and I put some blue painter's tape around here. We don't have the dust cover on just yet. What we wanna do is kinda of dry fit the tire and see how much end play we have on the bearing. This is just something I like to do. Um, over the years, it served me well when coming up with the right torque on these axles. The number one cause of bearing failure is dirt. And the second cause is overheating from over tightening your bearings or from over packing your bearings. So I like to go ahead and just put some lug nuts on here to tighten the wheel down. And then we can check the end play. Now our lug nuts are snug, but they're not torqued, but they need to be snug. You don't want any play between the wheel and the, and the hub assembly here. So. We can go ahead and give our tire a spin, and then we're gonna grab it left and right. And you should have just the slightest amount of movement. You don't want no movement, and you don't want a lot of movement. So you can go up and down if you want, and you can go left and right. And we have just the slightest amount of movement. That's what we want. So we're gonna go ahead and we can secure our cotter pin, just go ahead and take the tabs and bend them up. You can bend them either both up or you can trim the second tab and bend it back. Not to where it's touching the bearing, but just push it back got to lock the castle nut in place. When it comes to the last step, we have the dust covers. And we have a easy grease spindle here that already has a Zerk fitting on it. So we'll be using this supplied hubcap that came with it. If you don't have it, they've got the solid ones. These also come with your kit. So regardless of what spindle style you have, you have a new dust cover. So these go on. Um, Usually not easy. <laughs> you usually have to fight these for some reason. So I found again, the best thing, your best tool right now is a rubber hammer. Try to keep it as centered as possible. It will go on. Go ahead and pop your dust cover off. And you can give it a few shots of grease here. Remember the bearings are already pre-greased. We're just gonna go ahead and get some new grease in those seals. We we'll replace the replace the dust cap. Now if you don't have easy grease spindles, don't worry about this step. This is just for people with the easy grease spindles. This will already preload the spindle with fresh grease. Go ahead and lower your trailer to the ground and torque your lug nuts to the specifications for your trailer. Now, one of the things I do like about this kit is that it came included with new tapered lug nuts. So with everything torque to specs, that's basically it for the install. Remember, these are packaged single. So if you have four wheels, you're gonna to need to order four of these. And that's basically it. That was our look at the e-trailer 12 inch brake drum assembly.